Well, <laughs> the uh, I believe the float is no good in this carb. Uh, it looks like it may have had water in it and it froze. I'll pop it out in a second. I'll show you what I'm talking about. But uh, every time I try dropping fuel in it, it uh, overflows and pours out the throat of the carb, the intake. And uh, if you take the carb and you flip it upside down, the, the needle and seat shut off. So it will shut fuel off coming down to it it's just the um, uh, float doesn't float enough to shut the fuel off I've tried a couple of different um, uh, spots I, I keep bending the tab on the float to try to make it shut off quicker and quicker I may do it one more time and uh, see what we get but if you notice like the fuel level is like a level with the base of the bowl it'll just kind of go to that and pour out the front I get to run on it but I can't get it to run long enough to be able to dial it in plus if the, the fuel level keeps changing in the carb there's you know you're, you're fighting a lost cause as far as that's concerned so I don't know what it will take to try to locate a float for that carb um, I mean the show is promising it it does run <laughs> it runs on it um, I just said I didn't get the time to run it for any long period of time, probably 30 seconds maybe is uh, where it kind of maxes out. And I tried, uh, you know, feathering fuel in it and feathering the carb, the uh, choke rather, to get it to run, but uh, it's just not having it. So uh, I'll pull that back apart again and I'll give you a, uh, a little show and tell and we'll kind of see what's going on. Alright, so that's what's going on there. That's the um, the flow in position and that's off. That's how much the float I have moving right now. There's really not too much more I can take away from that. Um, the float looks normal on top. I'm gonna go pop the screw out of it. That retains it. And, uh, okay, yeah, stare at that for one second. There you go. It's got a uh, a pin that holds the float in, but the pin is screwed in. I should take my glove off to so make no use of the handle. Yeah, so that's the pin that holds it. Right. So there's the needle seat down there. That works okay. Here's the bottom of the float, see what I'm talking about? How it collapsed itself. So, unfortunately, I, I don't know if it's made like that or not, or it, when I was put it in the uh, parts washer, it didn't seem like it, um, trying to use that for an example. It seemed like it's got, you yeah. Just don't know. Maybe it just doesn't have enough push. Do I shut the jet off all the way? I'm not sure. The other part is too. See how that dent is right there? Uh, it comes down and hits the main needle. See that needle right there? Well, that goes into the center of the car. I'm not gonna be able to show it to you. And uh, pinches off a hole. Actually, I can. Is that hole right there? Well, that's where that needle goes in, and that's how you meter how much fuel is being sucked up by how much you restrict that, that orifice. So, well, I'm going to, what am I going to try doing? I think what I'm going to do is, um, I may try increasing that dent a little bit to give it a little bit more room to travel in the down position to shut it off. And, uh, Bend the tab maybe just a little bit further. Not sure. I gotta get it to the point where it can shut the jet off though. And as of right now, it just overflows the carb and uh, you know, you see it pissing out of the front of the front of it and it's just not gonna work like that, now is it? Yep, I try. Watch. No. It's just not gonna have it. That uh, float will not shut that fuel off going to it. Pretty much no matter what you do, you know. So, you see the 
a level it'll level out with the level of the bowl and then finally stops le uh, leaking other than that just doesn't this ain't gonna have it so uh, until I'm able to find a float for that carb I think that one's off the table uh, which is too bad because you know that um, more than likely I think would have idled a lot better and having a combination of adjustments and um, a carb that was built to have a throttle plate in it instead of the one that I had with a penny would have been a, uh, a better solution. But uh, you know, this motor's not going on a bike tomorrow, so it's not like it's that dire. But I kind of wanted to get my power source squared away and uh, know what I was working with for that to um, get the ideas going in my head, how much space I need, all that kind of thing. So as of right now, we're still going with the. Uh, the uh, penny carp and uh, if I find something for this or look on eBay tonight I'm able to find anything we'll we'll uh, chase this down a little further but um, if not we always have that one to fall back on so don't know to you try so I'm gonna put a rope around this a couple more times yank on it play with it a little bit but um, um, gotta run that back in uh, I think that's all folks Right, so I went looking for carbs to see what else I had for that system and um, one of the ones I grabbed I think if I even get a four stroker that has um, you know two air fuel mixes got the main and the idle I should be able to get that one to dial in but I just do not have a carb that's uh, worth a damn and you know, rightfully so because due to ethanol every carburetor is um, meeting its demise you know when the fuel sets in them so that would be the one um, piece on every machine that's uh, pretty much wasted so while I was back in the shed now that the sheds all nice and organized um, I did went and uh, rediscovered this motor and this one is a an early Tecumseh two-stroke it's got a neat little carb on it and I started looking into stealing the carb off of that yeah, looks like the flange is about the same. Yeah, it's a small horsepower motor too. You're gonna, yeah, who knows, two horse. Got a fan built into it. Package is small. Package is, uh, I'm gonna say that's eight or nine across. And it gets even smaller. You could actually take this top bracket off. And that base would come right off of there too. So, nothing saying that, um, we can't shift gears that um, unit down there uh, can all go right back together again no harm no foul I think I put it right back to the way it was but I haven't given up on that but uh, I did see this one and said to myself self why don't we hunt it for parts at our leisure and while we're doing that we could build one with this motor so I grabbed this one out got fuel in it I seem to remember this one started really easy.
let that run for a couple of minutes. We'll see what it gets up to temperature-wise. That's, that's got a built-in mechanical governor to like fly weights on it, but it's got a butterfly on it. By you, but that thing seems like it runs a lot better than that, don't it? Rev's nice. I don't think the uh, fan draws as much power from it. And it's got adjustment there and adjustment there. That's the choke. And again, that's that mechanical governor. Inside here, there's like a set of fly weights that, that uh, spin up and change to, uh, you know, gives you resistance when your RPMs come up too much to knock the throttle back down again. Uh, kind of liking that. Sometimes uh, I might have to go with plan B or C for now. And uh, we can continue working on trying to find parts for that one. But I'm thinking of starting to shift gears. I haven't given up on that one yet. But uh, that motor seems like it runs kind of nice. I'd like to find two of those. <laughs> Make a little V twin out of those. Maybe a look on that. Day for those. I believe it's a Tecumseh. It has a model right on it. What did I do with the flashlight? Did I leave it out back? Yeah, thanks, nope. So we got model AH47. That sounds familiar. Type F1033E Power Products. Craftsman. Craftsman WS. AH47. AH47 seems to be a um, motor that's stuck in my mind. I want to say they ran those for I 
I might be thinking of a VW engine, AH, <laughs> the initials on the front of it. So, I don't know, I'm gonna do a little homework on that. We'll look it up, see what it has for output. Um, two of those motors together would be cool though, huh? Hmm. Well, sometimes you just gotta look in your own hoard. And I think of that might be the same engine. left of a bulldog chainsaw. By peeking around the corners, that it's eerily similar to that. So I'm gonna go pull some tins off of that. The only thing that's a problem, I know, I, I, I had this motor running. I believe it's got a bad bearing. So, uh, the pull start's locked up. Possibly it's in the pull start, but I have a feeling. I think the crank uses roller bearings on this. If that's the case, this motor might be pooched. But if it's not, two of those together might make something pretty cool. And I believe they're four horsepower each, 77 cc's also. So, the pair of them would make a nice eight horse, 154 cc bike of terror.